In our last lesson, we learned about mark and sweep. It's a robust algorithm that correctly handles circular references. But over time, it can create a subtle problem, memory fragmentation. So what is memory fragmentation? Imagine a program that's been running for a while. The mark and sweep collector has run several times, deallocating garbage objects. Now look at the heap. We have live objects scattered throughout memory. Between them are small gaps where garbage used to be. Live object, free space. Live object, free space, and so on. The pattern repeats across the heap. Here's the problem. There's plenty of free space in total, but it's broken up into small, non-contiguous blocks. Free space exists, but it's scattered everywhere. Think of a parking lot. Every other space has a car in it. Car, empty, car, empty, car, empty. The lot is half full. Now imagine you need to park a bus. The bus needs multiple consecutive spaces. Can you fit it? No. There's plenty of empty space in total, but none of the gaps are large enough. You need contiguous space, and you don't have it. This is exactly what happens with memory fragmentation. Mark and Compact solves this problem by adding a new phase to the collection process. Instead of two phases, we now have three. Phase one is mark. This works exactly like mark and sweep. Phase two is compact. This is the new step that eliminates fragmentation. Phase three is update references. After moving objects, we must update all the pointers. The mark phase is identical to what we've already seen. The collector traces from the roots. It follows all references and marks every reachable object as live. This part hasn't changed. Now comes the compact phase. This is where mark and compact differs from mark and sweep. Look at the heap before compaction. We have object A, then a gap, then object B, then another gap, then object C, more gaps, and object D. The live objects are scattered with gaps between them. Now watch what happens during compaction. The collector moves all the live objects together. Object A, B, C, and D are now side by side, no gaps between them. They form one contiguous block at the beginning of the heap. And look at what's left. One large contiguous block of free space. Instead of many small gaps scattered throughout memory, we now have a single large chunk of available memory. This solves the fragmentation problem completely. But there's a complication. We just moved objects to new locations in memory. Every reference to these objects now points to the wrong address. We must update all the pointers to reflect the new locations. This is phase three. The collector scans through memory and updates every reference. To make this update efficient, the collector uses a clever trick, forwarding pointers. When an object is moved, the collector leaves a forwarding pointer at the old location. This pointer shows where the object moved to. When the collector encounters a reference to the old location, it follows the forwarding pointer to find the new location. Then it updates the reference to point directly to the new location. This ensures that after compaction, all references are correct. The result is impressive. No fragmentation. All live objects are packed together in one contiguous block, and we have one large free block for future allocations. Memory allocation becomes simple and efficient again, when you need to allocate a new object, there's always a large contiguous space available. But there's a trade-off. Mark and Compact eliminates fragmentation, which is excellent. However, moving objects and updating all their references is computationally expensive. The compaction phase takes time, more time than the simple sweep phase in Mark and Sweep. So we gain memory efficiency, but lose some speed. Despite this cost, Mark and Compact is widely used in practice. The Java Virtual Machine uses it for the old generation of objects. The .NET runtime uses it during full garbage collections. It's the algorithm of choice for managing long-lived object spaces. When objects survive many collection cycles, compaction becomes worth the cost. Mark and Compact successfully solves the fragmentation problem that plagues Mark and Sweep. It keeps memory tightly packed and efficient. All live objects stay together, and free space remains contiguous. But this efficiency comes at a cost. 
moving objects and updating their references makes it slower than mark and sweep. This trade-off between memory efficiency and speed is a recurring theme in garbage collection. In our next lesson, we'll explore a different approach, copying collectors to avoiding fragmentation.